So if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up, leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. Allow yourself to get comfortable. And as you get comfortable, you can let your eyes close. And with your eyes closed, you can listen to the sound of my voice. And while you're listening to the sound of my voice in the background, I'm just going to tell you a story. And as you listen along, you can begin to drift off asleep. And I don't know whether you'll drift off asleep faster with the sound of my voice or perhaps with the spaces between my words. And as you drift comfortably asleep and relax there, you can just imagine someone lying in a meadow and they're lying down on the grass it's night time the sun has recently set and they're gazing up at the sky noticing the twinkling of the stars noticing how more stars are appearing as their eyes adjust to the dark, noticing as they gaze up, the occasional shooting star that almost seems to fizz and pop, and how different shooting stars seem to be subtly different colours, some perhaps slightly more red, others a little bit green, some maybe with more of a blue tinge to them. And as they rest there, they can feel the cool grass beneath them. They can feel that tickling of the grass as the most subtle breeze blows on the grass by their hands. They can feel the sensation of the air passing in their nose and out. As they just experience being in the moment, gazing up at the sky. And as they continue to relax there, so the moon starts rising low on the horizon at first with a, a red tinge looking large on the horizon and they just have a sense of that and can see it at the corner of their eyes you can notice how that moon is rising slowly up into the sky and as they lie there with their eyes closed they begin to drift inside their mind feeling so peaceful And they just allow whatever thoughts come to mind to just occur to them. And they start hearing that sound of a, a warm, crackling fire on a cold winter's day. And that sound of the warm, crackling fire gets louder and they start to feel the warmth from that crackling fire. And 
and then begin to notice themselves. Sitting in the most comfortable armchair. With a cat resting on their lap. Purring away. Shadows dancing around the room. Soft lighting in the corners. Feeling so calm. And they notice a book on the table beside them. It's a book about space. And they don't really feel in the mood to read. But they pick the book up. And they just start slowly turning the pages, just looking at the pictures while they feel the warmth of the fire. And they imagine what it'd be like to go to the stars, to see the nebulae, to see different planets. And it brought back memories of being a child and having that first time looking through a telescope at Saturn and having all of your attention on what you can see through the eyepiece where you notice a hazy slightly moving Saturn drifting across the field of view and find it so awe-inspiring that you almost feel like you could be floating in space. And then, after a little while, the cat climbed down from their lap and they walked across the room. They added another log to the fire and the crackles that made before going, making themselves a, a hot chocolate, coming back, sitting down, enjoying that chocolate. And they had this feeling that something important was about to happen. And they didn't know what. And as they continue to just relax on this evening by the fire, they listened to that crackling. They saw the cat rest on the mat in front of the fire, having the warmest seat in the house. And as the fire burnt down to embers, it was just the most subtle glow. And they went to bed and drifted asleep. And in their dream, they found themselves on an old steam train. And they were travelling out through a savannah. They were heading out to the middle of nowhere for a safari. And the train pulled into a station. What looked to them like a really old fashioned station, like trains don't stop here often. They got off the train, walked down to a nearby river bank, noticing as they walked onto a jetty how their footsteps changed and now echoed on that wood. And they boarded a paddle steamer 
that was a first for them. And they just enjoyed that leisurely trip down the river. And they could see crocodile in the water just floating there. They could see some plant life, but it was turning more just to grasses the further they traveled. And after some time, as the sun rose, passed across the sky and began to set, they finally arrived at their destination. They left the boat, left all the other people and walked out into the middle of nowhere. And they found the most beautiful old tree out here. And they set up what was like a hanging tent up among the branches. And they lit themselves a campfire, had themselves some food, before climbing up into their tent. Where they could see the Milky Way arched overhead. And were surprised by the darkness out here. How inky the sky looked. And the next morning, after grabbing themselves some breakfast on their campfire, They got themselves a map that they'd brought with them. They were here to find something. And they set off following that map. And after a while, they came across some old ruins they were searching for. And they started exploring around those ruins and nature had begun to reclaim them. And in one of the ruins, they started hunting for an entrance. They knew there was supposed to be an entrance here somewhere. And they'd hoped it hadn't previously been found. And they eventually found just a subtle change in the look of the grass that let them know that the dirt in that area had a different moisture level and that beneath that area must be the old entrance. And so they dug that area out and found a hidden tunnel And they got out their torch and entered the tunnel and noticed how it was cooler down here in the tunnel than outside. And the light seemed to get absorbed into the tunnel walls. and each footstep echoed. And after just a little while, they came to a point where there was an actual door. And they pushed the door open and saw some steps. They shone the torch down the tunnel, down those steps.
and it looked like they were going to have to hold on to each side as they descended so they wouldn't be able to hold the torch. So they shone the torch down there, counted the number of steps, and saw that there were 20 steps down to the next level. So they put the torch away, held on to the sides, and started to descend, counting to themselves as they went. On step 20, 19, 18, going deeper and deeper, 17, 16, 15, 14, going all the way down those steps, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and they continued all the way, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and they could hear the echoes of their footsteps coming from below them. Three, two, one, and they step down finally into the lower tunnel. Got their torch out again, turned their torch on, and started to explore down here. And what they found was that they were now in a maze. And there was nothing on their map that told them the route through this maze. And so they got out some string, attached it near the steps, and started walking down the different passages of the maze. And every time they discovered a dead end, they would just backtrack with the string and then take a different route. And they knew there would be something like a maze down here because of what it is that they're searching for. And so they continued exploring, taking one route and then another. Each time having to backtrack with the string and then unwind that string again down a different path. Until eventually they found a large opening into a huge underground hall And in this underground hall, as they shone their torch around the walls, everywhere their light shone, the walls sparkled, shimmered, and reflected the light around. And they walked over to the walls. And they found that the walls were covered in crystals reflecting that light everywhere. And it helped to give this chamber a comfortable glow. And they were surprised that as they moved their torch around, there were certain points where light would seem to 
reflect in a more direct path. And they got the angle just right, almost like shining a laser pointer at some mirrors, that their torchlight bounced around the chamber and illuminated one point on the back wall. And they walked over to that point on the back wall. And they saw a stone with some symbols on it. And they slid that stone aside. And the other side of the stone, they found the most beautiful pink, almost glowing crystal. And they reached in and they took hold of that crystal. And just as they did, they felt the most profound sense of deep calm, relaxation, and well-being. That kind of calmness that someone can have from waking from the most beautiful sleep or deep relaxation. That kind of calmness that almost tingles through you from the top of your head all the way through to the tips of your toes. And they started to gain some insights, almost like that crystal somehow is containing knowledge that's triggered by touch. And they started absorbing that knowledge and realizing it's knowledge from an ancient civilization. Knowledge about the universe about our place in the universe and about where this civilization came from. Not where it came from on Earth, but where it came from in outer space. And they took that crystal with them and left the chamber and left the maze And they found their way back to their tent. And as they rested in their tent, feeling that tent just lightly rocking in the tree, with a slight breeze on the sides, they gazed up into the sky they looked at the constellations and they began to understand their part in it all, their place within the story of this civilization. And as they drifted off asleep, so they began to dream that knowledge and wisdom and the person who'd gone to bed awoke in the morning feeling like he'd had the most profound insight that he learned something in his dream that was connected to his reality. And he went out of his cabin he walked out into snowy outdoors breathed in that cold outdoor air took in some of that nature 
and his cat ran out and jumped in the snow as well, before running back in and going by the fire. And then they went back in, sat back down in that comfortable chair, and relaxed back in front of their fire. Was that person there, lying back on that really cool and comfortable grass, under the most beautiful night sky, could feel the light of the moon on their face, as the moon reached high overhead now. And so they decided to walk home on this beautiful evening. Where they went indoors, went up to bed. And settled down and drifted so peacefully and so comfortably asleep.